Blog Talk Radio. Through the years there were times I felt like I was losing my mind. Never thought I'd get to this place where I'd find the peace inside. In the darkness I found my light. I found peace in the tears I've cried. Now I've got a million reasons for life. We can rise if we don't fall now. Be my everything. 
Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah, Hello. this is Vanessa. Vanessa, hi. Hey, this, is this is Dr. King. Hi, Dr. A. Marie is here. This is Dr. King. Hello, this is Dr. Vanessa. Vanessa Henderson is here. And Dr. Kane is here. <laughs> Hi, Doctor. Hi. I hear Are some we the only one Dr. A. Marie. I hear some ticking <laughs> in the background. I hear the ticking too. That's weird. Yeah, I, I don't know what that is. Could be somebody's mm. fan. Here, Oliver is on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes can ma'am, you. can you hear me? I can yep. hear you. This is This is Lynn John. I created a flyer for you guys. Did you get the chance to see the flyer? Different measures of significance and this
Can everyone hear me now? Can everyone yes, hear me? I can hear you. Can you okay, hear me as well? Okay, it's an unscripted day. It's an unscripted yes, day. Are. I don't know what to say. It's an <laughs> unscripted day. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I am still saying get rid of that knocking. This show is about to be so powerful. I'm not going to let the enemy have it, have the joy. I'm not. Because <laughs> what we're about mm-hmm. to talk about today is needed. It's definitely needed. I don't know what the ticking noise is in the background. Right. We're going to get I'm rid of that. Our new speakers. The devil. The devil. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These Obama. I don't know what, what that ticking noise is. Yeah. But we're going to roll with this anyway. We will figure it out. Um, show with Dr. Uh, Dr. Bessie Fletcher um, last week, and when we did that show with her, it was so powerful to me because it ministered to my spirit to the point where it made me call my mother and talk to my mother mm-hmm. and even talk to my daughter. So. Um, we just decided that we had to have Dr. Beth come on. She has a new book out, um, and it's called um, – Dr. Beth, introduce your book, please, because you don't have the answer today. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Hi. Can y'all hear me? Hello. Hi. Hello. Yes. yes. Hello. Hi. Yeah, the book is Good News, God Speaks to Mothers and Daughters, and it really – does exactly what it says. God speaks to mothers and daughters. If you want to know what God thinks about your mother and daughter relationship, he gave me the messages within that book. Go to my website at mbbn.org and get the book. I guarantee you'll be pleasantly surprised and you'll find out how to deal with your mother and daughter relationship no matter how old you are. That book is going to help you. No matter how old your daughter is. It's going to help you because the word of God is forever, and it it will bring you through it. There it is. The enemy is really trying right. to get us out to talk. To the enemy is I, really trying so hard to stop this. Yeah, yeah. In the name of that. Jesus, we but cast this to... out right now. In the name of Jesus, we're going to get up out of this radio. Amen. You. Amen. Amen. Wow. The enemy is not about to stop this. No, no, no. So I would like for um, – I'm going to go one at a time. Um, I don't know who – I'm going to mute everybody, and I'm going to unmute um, and see who's who because I don't know who's who. There's so many people on the line tonight. So I'm going to start <laughs> muting and um, – I'm going to start muting. Okay. I don't know what the noise stopped. Can y'all, okay, can y'all still hear me? Can everyone still hear me? I hear you. Okay. The noise stopped. I don't know. It must have been that there must be a number that's calling from overseas, and that number must be have, have the ticking sound in it, whatever that number is, whoever that is. Okay. So um, I have... The line I have open, your area code starts with 954. Who would that be? Yes. That's Dr. Bessie. Dr. Bessie, you know what I'm saying? All right. Okay. I feel better. All right, Dr. Bessie. Now the floor is yours. (laughs) The the air is clear. You see what I'm saying? The enemy is trying so hard, but we're not going to get great is he that is in us than he that's in the world. You hear what I'm saying? And there's too many praying people, believing people on this line. The enemy was not about to get that joy. Uh, all I had to do was just mute, mute, mute to figure out where the noise was coming from. Praise God. So, mm-hmm. Dr. Beth, yeah. please yes, repeat ma'am. who you are. Thank you. Say you got again? the floor, Dr. Bessie. You got the floor. Oh, hi. I'm Dr. Bessie. I'm a Christian clinical psychologist. I'm also a chaplain. I've spent 20 years working with mothers and daughters. I specialize in their relationships. And let me tell you, I have stories to tell. Um I uh, also am the host of a radio program, Mother and Daughter Roundtables, with my co-host, Cynthia Oliver. Uh, We are now doing our new television show, My Mother, My Daughter. You can find the first show uh, on my YouTube channel, Dr. Bessie Fletcher, Ph.D. Uh, We are coming back out with our magazine, the Mother and Daughter Binding Magazine. We have Mrs. Obama on one of the covers. 
Uh, let's see what else wow. is going on. We have the mother and daughter. Bi- we have the mother and daughter Bible college that God had us to create okay. for women that was in in prison. So this is our third year. Mm. We just went online and we offer um, scholarship for women that want to finish their college degree. Say, for instance, if you have 60 hours, 30 hours, and it was 10 years ago, and nobody would take them. We're an accredited school. We'll take those credit hours, and we'll bill you an end so you can finish your college degree. We give you a scholarship, and the only thing you have to pay is $99 for your exit exam. So there's no reason that you can't start where you stop. And basically, that is, that's where we are right now. <laughs> that That's powerful. That's very powerful. I, and I'm honored to have you. So I, I have a question. I'm just curious. Um, and then I want to. I'm going to open up the floor for the other because um, we have a lot of powerful people on this line today. Powerful women. <laughs> All so, right. um, and but that's Dr. what Bessie I'm looking before, for. Oh my gosh! When I say you, we got power on this line, but I'm going to open up each one individually so they can have a chance to say who they are, and then um, we're going to jump right into the whole reason of why you created this movement because to me it's a movement because there's so many it mothers is. and daughters who don't communicate or whatever so to me what you have is a ministry it's a movement for sure so i'm going to um i'm going to i'm going to put you on hold and i'm going to go to the next one the next um caller your number starts with 919 who is that your ear code is 919 dr Avery. <laughs> Hey. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> so, Dr. Emery, we actually had you on one of our previous shows, I think, like back in January. Yes, honey. Yes, I, yes. Yeah, uh-huh. So please tell them who you are because you've got a lot of stuff going on, too. Tell them who you are and what you got going on and um, how do you, what do you feel about mothers and daughters, their relationship? Oh, my. Oh my! So I am I am Dr. A. Marie, aka uh, Dr. Mocha Storm. So I am a radio show host. I am a model, and thanks to Van Miller, uh, a model of mental preparation. I am also an author, uh, author of per- the personality traits and lived experiences of African American adolescent girls who have fathers in prison, fathers incarcerated. Uh, I have a Ph.D. in forensic psychology, so I travel all around the world responding to traumatic events. I specialize in uh, urban care and um, PTSD, trauma, substance abuse. Yeah, just a lot, a lot going on. Uh, I have my own daughter. We've had our own uh, issues that we've worked through. I've worked with a lot of mothers and and daughters, but I, overall, I'm all about the community. Everything that I do is about community. Uh, I always say I give away more than what I pay for, but that's my blessing. So yes, and I have um, the Eye of the Storm radio show was set to launch yesterday, but we had a slight delay, so we're going to launch next Monday. That that's me. I'm I'm glad to be a, a part of this panel. I think I lost it. I don't hear a thing. <laughs> okay, the next person, I'm sorry, I still had to phone on mute. Lord, help me. <laughs> All right, the next person is 762. That's your area code? 762? Okay, I don't know who 762 is, but we're going to go on right down the line. Area code 516. Hi, this is Dr. Kane. Yes, I'm 516. This is Dr. Alicia Kane. Hi, Dr. Kane. Kane. What's going on? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Fine. Okay, great. Yes, how are you? I am so fine. I'm so happy that you're here. We're having an unscripted seat. Now I understand why God had me put unscripted because he know his daughter. He know he know me. He like, Patricia, <laughs> we already know you're going to have issues here and there, so just go ahead and tell them it's unscripted, it's unfiltered, uncut, you know, uncensored, so they will already understand. 
<laughs> don't be looking for perfection. So anyway, Dr. Kane, please tell the panel who you are and what you do and all that kind of jazz. All right. Well, first I want to thank you again for having me back on the show, and I'm very pleased to be part of this panel. I wear a lot of hats. I am a in, uh, cr- internal medicine critical care physician, and I have a lot of community activity that I am involved in. I publish a magazine called Impeccable Magazine, geared toward the African-American uh, women, young women, to give them empowerment and a positive image of themselves. I've done a lot of work in the prisons as a medical doctor, and I work with veterans. I, I do a lot of work with uh, veterans. I also lately started on a new project. It's called a Wig Phoenix, which allows women to uh, rejuvenate their old wigs without going to the salon, without taking them to the salon in about an hour. It's a machine. But that's we'll talk wow. about that on another show. <laughs> but right now, <laughs> as, a, <laughs> as a medical doctor with my fingers in a lot of pies, I'm also very, very, and we talked about this on the last show, so I won't go deeply into it. I'm also very concerned in terms of what is happening with COVID-19. And I am, I have stuck, created a website in which people in our community and other communities that are impacted by COVID-19 and can't get their medications, we have set up a website to help them uh, do this. Now, in terms of mother daughters, I am a mother. I have one daughter, I have one granddaughter, and one great-granddaughter. And so it's generational. So relationships between mothers and daughters and grandmothers, it's very complex, very complex. Wow. But it's very, in, in my case, I mean, in my experience, it's so worth it, and it's very loving. Mothers aren't perfect, daughters aren't perfect, and I'm very happy to hear that there is a whole movement going on in which the relationship between mothers and daughters is explored. Amen on that. And you know this the now that's the third time I've heard prison. So that tells me that there are mothers and daughters. There are mothers who maybe are in prison and their daughters are living without them or vice versa who are who is going to definitely need this movement because who would be more broken than a mother who has been snatched away from her children and sent to jail and now she gotta figure out how she can still keep that connection but she's not around. I've heard prison Three times, so that's definitely. But so, thank you very much, Dr. Kane. Uh, I'm going to go right on down the list because I want to give everybody a chance to um, introduce themselves before we open up. So the next one, I'm guessing this is uh, must be an international one because I'm seeing one one one. So I'm going to open it up. Hello. So this is is this is this someone on the line? Okay, so that must be the ticking. I'm sorry, whoever you are. I'm sure you've called from a far, far away, somewhere overseas. But unfortunately, we cannot hear you. We can only hear the ticking sound in the background. I apologize. So I'm going down to the next person on the line. Um, your your area code starts with 330. 330? Hey, hello, hello. This is Lynn John. Lynn John at Entertainment. What is going on, Lynn? So Lynn <laughs> was the one who actually made the um, flyer. She is my right hand assistant. Thank you so much. When um, when I did the 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 movie, this can't be love, and I had the film premiere. I would not have been able to get through it without Lynn. She she was my virtual <laughs> assistant, and she was the bomb, bomb, bomb. So I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lynn. Tell them all about you, your movement, and what you got going on. And how can you relate to this topic about mothers and daughters? Oh, thank you so much, Patricia. Um, You have such a powerful, powerful panel, so I'm not going to be wrong. I just want to get on here and say I have my own digital marketing company, and, you know, I do a lot of things in the community, in the dance world. Uh, But today I just want to say it's really important to reach out to your mom. My my mom passed four years ago, and so I just, whoever's listening, just, it's it's really crucial to just try to mend any ties or mend any any broken ties that you have with your mom, because you just never know 
when the last day will be. She had cancer, and she she fought that battle to the end. But I, I just want to say that it's just you know really crucial. Uh, just keep in touch with your mom if you can. Right. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Lynn. So I'm going to slide yes. on down the line. <laughs> All right. Slide on down the line. Go ahead, girl. Do your thing. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm sliding down the right line. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to go to 954. Your air code is 954. Hi, my name is Cynthia Oliver. I am... Dean of Education with the Mother and Daughter Bible College. I am um, a college student, and um, I'm, I'm pleased to be on the on the line. Thank you for allowing me to share. Awesome. So, are you with Dr. Bessie? I am. Awesome. I am her awesome. right hand. Awesome. You are her right. Oh my gosh. I am. You know what? I, let me open. Let me open up the line, so Dr. Uh, Dr. Fletcher, Bessie Fletcher can. Um, it can tell you, like, okay, because I know Dr. Fletcher was first. Dr. Fletcher? Yes, ma'am. So this is your right-hand lady over here? <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's Cynthia Oliver. Cynthia's been with me. Uh, well, we've been together for 11 years working in ministry. Um, we've been at the prison system now, I think, about 10 years created the Bible College together. She's the dean of the college, and she's my co-host on Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock on Blog Talk Radio on the Mother and Daughter Roundtables. Uh, awesome. I tell them that Cynthia, she's my John. You know, I got to have someone that will lead the way for you, uh, along with uh, she has been the one that has stuck and stayed. A lot of people have come along, but, you know, they get weary along the way. But she said God sent her, and she acts like God sent her. So I am very pleased, and God is opening up the door now with this movement, and people are calling and interviews all over the place, and and I just we just seen God's hand move. We've been waiting. I've been doing it for twenty years, and God told mm-hmm. me in September, um, He said on the twenty ninth you would have been working with mothers and daughters for twenty years, and I'm going to open up the uh, uh, windows of heaven. I was like, Amen. I've, I've been steadfast. So things, his hands has been moving, and it's moving very quickly. And now I'm on your show, and all these wonderful ladies I'm sitting here listening to, all of them, and God told me to put together 200 women. And I was sitting there thinking mm. that they were talking, and everybody's doing the same thing. And I'm thinking, if we all could just come together, the movement that God has placed on my heart to do, 200 women, and we come together and we reach the goal that we have is 10 million mothers and daughters around the world. He said when mothers and daughters mm. come together that the whole world is going to take a shift. Now, when you're talking about the coronavirus night right now, that's why God is moving in my life now because it's time. It's time, he said, for you to go out because the coronavirus, we have got to bring the family back. That's why he sent us all home. Go home. So he's trying to heal the family, and it's going to take the mothers to do this. It's the nurturing fact that we have, that nurturing spirit that we have that God has put in us to while we have the children home, while we have the husband home, are we nurturing them? Are we talking about God? Are we showing the children God? Because the children can't see God if we don't see God. We, they can't come past Amen. us to see him. So I don't know. God just placed it on my heart to say that. You know what? And I well, thank you, don't Cynthia. believe in accidents. You I don't love believe it. in accidents. I don't believe in accidents. Yeah. I believe that everything that happened is is ordained. I believe that things happen for a reason. Meetings happen for a reason. I don't believe that we meet anybody by accident. I believe that everybody that's on this line is supposed to be on this line. And obviously, y'all are supposed to be part of the 200 women because there are no accidents. Like, things don't happen by accident. I don't have a lot of doctors and professionals and people who deal with therapy and helping people. I don't have them all on my show at the same time. For nothing. I know y'all probably thought it was going to be this, but it might be that. You know, God has, God understands and knows all. There, there, there are no accidents. But I want to go down. I have one more person I want to introduce, and then, um, w- then we'll start back with the purpose for God, why God has us together today. So um, your number starts with six four six. Your air code. Hi, it's Charity. Um, Hi, Charity. So- How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? 
fine. Now I remember you did um, a, a radio show with Dr. Uh, Mr. Stout on his show. Wait, with who? Right. Then you do, well, I call him Mr. Stout. I don't know um, Skin Beach. That you might have called him Skin Beach. Here's I the thing: I know. totally anyway. could have, but my publicist keeps me very busy, and sometimes I just confuse people. So I don't want to say no. Okay, but it, just, it doesn't matter. It's not. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so because you're not here by accident, so please go ahead and tell right. everyone who you are and what you do. Um, so I'm the owner of Curvy Chick Fitness. I'm a personal trainer. Um, I do uh, one-on-one sessions. I do small group sessions. Obviously, now I'm doing more online work. Um, I own a natural hair studio. I will. I have my own space as far as hair and fitness goes. So I'm really about kind of like the intimate settings as far as those two are concerned. Um, I don't have goals to open a huge gym or anything like that. Um, I have a YouTube show called What's in Your Basket, and I have a few guests each show, and we just kind of, each person kind of has different things going on. So, you know, we just take each person's scenario. I have some cool um, um, sponsors, and so you'll see us go through their product and their things on the show. Um, Yeah, I think that's about it. I model sometimes. It just depends on, you know, what it's about. The article's for, obviously, more fitness stuff now. but yeah, it's me in a nutshell. So, um, I lost my mom about 12 years ago, so I've always kind of felt away on Mother's Day, to be honest. I, you know, don't want to go to work, don't be outside. I've always kind of felt away, but as time goes by, I realize there's obviously been some women placed in my life to help guide me. So I'm just trying to be a little more open to that and not be in a negative space when that time comes. Amen. So I would think that dealing with women who are thicker, you know, if you have mothers that come on with their children or come to you with their children, do you ever experience any type of, do you ever have to counsel anybody or talk to anybody about their self-image, the mothers, the daughters, do you ever go through that? Yeah, that kind of happens at first. You know, I initially do like a free workout and that's just me just trying to, you know, the first workout free, just me just trying to figure out like where your self-talk is. How do you talk to yourself? How do you talk about yourself? Um, Just kind of go through things like that. I definitely have trained like mother-daughter couples or whatever. So that's obviously been um, part of what I do because I don't work with men. I only train women. So I tend to definitely get that uh, more often than not. So that's always been kind of interesting. Oh. Okay, okay. So, um, well, I appreciate you for being here because, like I said, there are there there are no such things as accidents. So you're definitely not here on on accident. Um, you're definitely here on purpose. You know, you're here on purpose for sure. So I want to go back to. Um, I'm going to start opening up the line just so everyone, only thing I ask is because we have so many people on, let someone say whatever it is that they want to say and complete their sentence before um, jumping in. But I'm just going to open up the lines because I really want a free flow, free flow, and I want it to be an unscripted thing. So um, I'm opening up everyone's line. So, Dr. Dr. Bessie, what what yes, was your thought? What what would you say to a mother? who um, she's in prison and her and her daughter, who she hasn't seen maybe since she was one, two, three, four, what would you say, how would you say she could try to build up a relationship with her child if she does have communication, if she's locked up? Well, there's different uh, methods now of communication with the prison system. It's a lot different than it used to be. Um, God asked me to go into the prison system in 2004, but I didn't want to, you know, and um, I'm not saying that to be arrogant. I was just, like, scared, and I was like, Lord, I don't want to go to the prison, but he was telling me that it was coming, and so in 2013, I think it was, two, yeah, 2013, I said, and so I said, okay, we went for a meeting. But now to get back to your the answer to your question, I got there and I met so many women that had children. And even though he said daughters with mothers in prison, when I got there, there was mothers that hadn't seen their children. The family didn't want them to see them. They were being punished. And they was hurting. So, you know, of course, I'm a Christian clinical psychologist. And so 
you know, first thing I'm doing is helping them to be okay. You can't really have a relationship with your daughter until you are okay. So we're going to get to the nut right. note of what is going on in your intro conversation. Like the young lady just said, she's telling them about what's going on. I specialize in the intro conversation, those ongoing conversations in your head. How do we de- look at them, divide them, to see if you're really processing what is reality? Are you, are you processing what you think is going to happen? So first we're going to get them to a clear mind state and then get them to understand that, you know, whatever you're going through, if you can get straight with yourself and forgive yourself, then you're going to be in a position and you don't talk to God about it and you and God get it straight, then when you see your daughter, God is going to prepare you and she's going to receive you better than if you come out with a bunch of excuses. So that's the first thing I want them to do is to be honest and have an honest conversation with themselves and then forgive themselves and then be ready when they see their daughter. Now, I had a story of a young lady that um, she's in our, in our um, college right now. She just got out about a month ago, hadn't seen her daughter, been in prison for 10 years. And all of a sudden she got out and she wanted to go see her daughter. She's talking, but see, now they have cell phones, thank God. They can talk to, the, to each other. So she's talking to her daughter. And her husband, well, her ex-husband didn't want her to see the daughter. I don't know, maybe you got that prison thing still going on. And she's like, you know, I need to see my daughter. So he kept putting off, putting off, wouldn't let her see her because he didn't trust her. And, you know, that's what happened a lot of times. People don't want to see the new you. That's why I tell them when you come across and graduate and walk across that stage, you're going to change the picture because they're not going to see you as the one that was in prison. They're going to see you as a person that's educated with a degree. Well, she put up with me right. and talked about it, and I said, well, just, just talk to your daughter, and you just keep the communication going. We're going to pray on it, and God's going to allow you to see your daughter. Well, what happened three weeks ago? Her daughter was in the car with her dad, and a truck hit him. She was in a coma for three weeks. So when she saw her daughter, her daughter was in a coma. And I'm going to make the story short. And so I was talking and praying to God, and I said, God, I said, you have to tell me what I need to do because she don't want to talk. She shut down. I said, what do, you want, what do you want me to do? God woke me up one morning and said, tell her to go in there and talk to her daughter. She can hear it. Tell her to wake up. Tell her to come back. They got things to do. She thought I was crazy. Oh, no, Dr. Fletcher. She was crying. I said, I had to talk real rough to her because I'm like, crying is not going to get it. You got to, you, you, we done trained. You know how to conscious, the unconscious and the subconscious work. You know you have a relationship with God. You're talking to God. Now you've got to be the mother. And all the, you can't go in there crying. She can hear you. You walk in that room, and you be the mother, and you tell her to come back, and you tell her what you're going to do, that y'all have things to do. I said, God told me to tell you to tell her that, but she's going to wake up. Well, she thought I was crazy. What happened on Friday? She was talking to her daughter. Her daughter woke up, and we was crying mm. today like she would not believe. So wow. there's so many different cases, wow. and everyone is different. But you have got to know that it's going to start with that mother. I tell mothers all right. the time, they say, why are you so hard on mothers? I say, I'm not hard with mothers. God chose you to be a mother. You, Every woman is a daughter. Even if you, some women will say to me, I want to be a part of your movement, but I don't have a daughter. But you are a daughter, and you had a mother or have a mother, so you have a mother and daughter relationship. And whatever that is, you should be willing to pour back into some young girl. We're in the Titus II movement. We have got to raise up a whole new generation. That's what this movement is about. We keep talking about the world so, not being good and this and that's happening. But what's happening? We're not pouring back into the children. So I'm sorry. I, I got to go preach. That is deep. No, no, that I understand. The passion is there. So um, I'm curious because I know Dr. Anne Marie deals with uh, – uh, daughters whose mothers in prison. So, Doctor Anne Marie, when you, what is the most difficult? I know you can't give specifics, but what do you think was the most difficult, difficult challenge that you faced with with counseling um, mothers and daughters, like were the mothers in prison or, or whatever, and and how do you, how did you counsel them to get through it? Well, actually, mine were my my book is based on. Um, girls who have fathers in prison. But in oh, okay, my right. work with um, mothers and daughters, I have done work with them um, where the mom is mm-hmm. in prison. And what I've seen, 
the most <laughs> the most difficult thing is trying to get past the stigma of what it means for one to be in therapy. That's always the most difficult when it comes to our culture. Uh, and and the younger generation for me and my practice is actually more open to it than mm. the mothers are or mm. even any of the other families. So the, the biggest thing for me is getting people past that stigma of, hey, everybody needs somebody to sit down and talk with about something, including myself mm-hmm. from time to time. Mm-hmm. So getting that message out there um, and really promoting healing through using the voice, so important. Use your voice. Speak about what's going on, <clears throat> what's going on with you. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. That that is um, big. I, I know, um, Dr. Kane. I know that you deal with. Um, you say you've done some prison work. So, how do you deal with it when either the mother or the daughter or somebody is angry, like they're just angry, like? So my okay, my dealings with uh, women in prison wasn't from the counseling aspect. It was from the medical aspect. You know, if they have diabetes, high blood pressure, but there was a group of women. There is a group of women in prisons now that need a lot of support. These are pregnant women. When I was dealing with at Rikers Island, they have a whole unit called the Rosie Building that has have at least two or three thousand women. And a lot of these women come into the prison uh, pregnant, and those women need a lot of support because they had a nursery in the prison. So the mothers bonded with with their children maybe for a few days, and then those children were snatched from them or were taken from them because the children were not raised in the prison. So those women need a lot of support. Yeah, I, I imagine they do. So I want to switch uh, uh, for a second, and I want to speak to um, the daughters who have lost their mother. And I know we have um, two on the line because you have people now, right now, at Mother's Day who are trying to deal with the fact that they have lost their, their mother. And and so I want to ask um, um, individually, I want to ask um, Miss Charity and I want to ask Lynn, how did you deal with it? Like, what advice would you give to someone who recently lost their mother, especially when we're coming around towards Mother's Day? So let's start with you, Miss um, Charity, and then we'll go to you, Miss Lynn. So, Miss Charity, how did you get through it, and what advice would you give to someone else who has lost their mother? Well, for me personally, at the time, it was just me and my brother, and he was acting a mess, and so. Honestly, when everything happened, I definitely didn't grieve because with me being the oldest and me just having to, like, just figure things out and take care of the apartment and figuring out her arrangements, like, I realized, like, looking back at that time, like, I don't even remember that week. Like, (laughs) I don't remember the details. Like, it's just something that I just think that I was on autopilot and I just had to do it because no one else was going to do it. Um, We were originally in Tacoma, Washington, and my mom's family is from California and Texas, and nobody came up. So it was just one of those things that I just had to figure it out. So, um, you know, I feel like if anything, I I would advise people to, like, use the people around you just because there's people that are offering and trying to do things, and it's okay for that to happen. Um, you know, try to right. find your your inner circle of women just because I know, like, you know, I I, I I firmly believe that, like, even though you lose your mother or whatever, you know, there's women sent to you along the way that are there for a reason, um, whether it's your friend's mom or grandmother and aunt, just, you know, I feel like if you look a little further, you will have some strong women influences and just to take advantage of that because if those people love you and they're telling you they love you and they want to love on you, um, do it because it will make you, you know, it, it doesn't obviously nothing can take up for your mother's love. But I know like when I go back home, there's certain friends that just want to love on me and pray for me and protect me. And I just, I feel like I'm allowing to do that now versus then I was just like, no, I'm fine. I'm okay. I can handle it. It's good. It's great. I'm working, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But now I'm just like, nope, I'm going to come be spoiled and let you love on me and do what, you know, makes you feel good. What ultimately makes me feel good. So 
just be open to the love. Awesome. Because it's there. Right. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I and I and I'm so sorry for um your loss uh, of your mom. Um, Lynn, Thank same you. question to you. So how would you do how, you're welcome, um, Charity. How would you how what what would you say to um a a a, young, a a girl, a daughter, a, a woman who has lost her mother, um, and and uh, how did you get through it? And what advice did you give to someone who has just lost their mom? Mm-hmm. I, I get, I'm getting so choked up about it. My heart is racing. So bear with me. <laughs> uh, okay, I, um, okay, three things. The first thing is therapy. Um. Because when my mom was sick and going through it, she asked me to be her nurse. Now, I don't I don't have a, I'm not an RN, you know. Uh, I studied med- medical terminology, but I'm not a nurse. But I did the best that I could, you know, for my mom because I love my mom. And um, so I was there mm-hmm. for her, and, and it, I, I took it really, 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 really hard. So me and my dad went to therapy immediately after she passed. So that's number one. I I would advise any daughter to go to a therapist. It don't have to be a, a, you know, an actual therapist. If you can't make it to one, it could be a church. You could talk to a pastor. You could talk to uh, the first lady of the church or just who someone that you, it's, it's good to talk to somebody. Number two, I threw myself into my work. Every time you turn around, you'll see a flyer I created or or I, any, every chance I got, I would go dance. I'm, I'm a ballroom dancer, so I love to dance and promote dancing. So that was number two. That was therapy for me. And number three is music. Music is, is so calming. It's peaceful. And, I, I, you know, that really just helped me out a lot. I think those three things, and, of course, family can help you too, but I only had one brother, and he passed ten years prior to me losing my mom. So I don't really have a lot of family. I never had any sisters, so I don't really have a fam a lot of family to rely on. So I really had to just um, do what what made me happy. So I, that's my advice to young girls or anyone that has lost their mom: just hold on to what makes you happy and pray. That's it. Right, right. So I, I want to switch Ms. Patricia. Again, I don't want to, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I wanted to chime in because I, too, lost my mother. Oh, okay. I'm sorry to hear that. that that's quite all right. Um, um, and I, as a result of meeting Dr. Fletcher, I literally got to – I had not had a relationship with my mother or uh, for 48 years. And I met Dr. Fletcher, and I was volunteering with her, and one day she challenged me to go and get the answers that I needed. And then two years later, my mother was diagnosed with lung cancer. And so what I would like to say, if I had to talk to someone, and to flip the script, I had a a very close uh, friend that lost her daughter 12 hours after she gave birth to her granddaughter, and so my my girlfriend is raising her granddaughter, and so I would say what I said to her that if you if we neglect to accept what God allows, then we struggle more with letting with with letting go, and so I would say to someone we have to. Yes, pray about it. Yes, therapy, all of that stuff is amazing. But if you don't accept it, you struggle longer and you struggle harder. It's like quicksand. The more you struggle, the deeper you sink. And my girlfriend said to me one time, it's not the same. It's not supposed to be the same. I'm also a psychology major. And so when I, when, when, for me, Death is all is part of it. It's part of this thing called life. So when we learn to accept what God allows, we really do get along in this world a little bit easier. And so we have to hold on to things and people very loosely because we don't know 
when God is going to allow them to transition on or to, uh, or to be taken away from us, as people put. So thank you for mm. allowing me to yeah. share. Yeah, that's you know what because I felt like that was something. Um, uh, uh, there have been there are daughters who have lost their mother, you know what I'm saying, or vice versa, and and just being able to get through the grieving process is a big thing. And so I just wanted to definitely touch on that for mothers who and, and who have lost um, their daughters or daughters who have lost their mothers. So um, I, I want to switch Can topics I ask a little bit. About? Yes, ma'am. I want to add something to that, too. What I do when I have someone come to me for therapy or grieving sessions, mm-hmm. I always tell them, oh, get a book and write down as many things that you can remember about your mother that made you laugh. Just write them down. Mm-hmm. All the little memories. Let's take all the good things that you did together. And, and when you write them down and when the sad part come up and you're missing your mother, Pull out that book and let's look at that one time when we was at the beach and she just she fell in the water. You know what I mean? That's gonna that's gonna take your mind back to something else and then it's gonna replace that negative with a positive and it'll make you laugh. And laughing therapy is good for the heart. So I would suggest that and, and it works well if you would try that, you'll find out you got so many wonderful stories about your mother that just will brighten up your heart and your life, and you just laugh. And I do that with my mother because my mother's not here. But when I'm going on the trip, I'm always saying, come on, Pearl, let's go. And, 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 and I just act as if she's there. So I remember the good things, and that might be a help to somebody. Thank you. Amen for that. Amen for that. That's actually um, extremely so, helpful. I'm sorry? Sorry, I just said that was extremely helpful. Awesome. And who is it? Thank Please you. say your name so that they this will is know. Charity. Who I'm is. sorry. Charity. Charity. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's awesome. Did and that's have, my uh, role, Dr. Charity. Dr. I mean, I become everybody's mother. So for Mother's Day, we're mm-hmm. going to spend it together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and that flies me to uh, Miss uh, Van Miller because Van Miller is a mother to stuff. I mean, she deals with fashion. She's an international fashion designer. But She also deals with models on a daily basis all the time, and I know she's a mother hen because she didn't have to call my daughter. So I just want to say to you, uh, Dr. Van Miller, I mean, uh, uh, Ms. Van Miller, how do you deal with with the girls when it's obvious that there's not a connection with the mom and they start to kind of lean on you for Motherly type things because I know you got you have to have them. They're, they're, you, I know you have those ladies in those models that you have to talk to, minister to, mother on, um, as well as instruct in the modeling. So how do you deal with that, Doctor Van Miller? I mean Van Miller. Do I have a I have Miss Van Miller? I hope I don't have her still on. Um, hold on. I, I hope I didn't uh, uh, delete her. So, Van ben, Miller, when you come back on the line, if you have it blocked or whatever, um, just let me just chime on in. So I also believe we have one person that I didn't get to introduce. Um, is Kim on the line? Kimberly? Yes, she is. How are you doing, Kim? I'm, so, um, I'm well. I apologize for my late my late entry. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so basically, uh, we're, we're talking about uh, mother and daughter relationships, and I know that with you, you do a lot of counseling of men, but but you also deal with women too. So, how would you speak to a a a, a woman who came to you broken because she has you know, she doesn't have that relationship with her mother or, or that she needs to have. Like, what what would you say to her? Like, how would you, in your everyday counseling, if you're a massage, massage therapist and you do counseling and all that kind of stuff, so how do you deal with that? With a woman who's broken and does not have her mother? Is, is that the question? Right. The relationship is not good with the mother. She's broken because of that, that relationship. Sometimes is important or necessary to 
not ne- not necessarily deal with the dynamic of the relationship. So not necessarily deal with it as a mother and daughter, but more as women. And as women, you find a common ground. You find, you know, where you all have, you know, shared some same experiences or, you know, shared same emotions, um, same ideas, same pain. And when you can find that commonality, it makes it, you know, a little more comfortable to be able to reestablish where the where the relationship has been broken, it allows you to reestablish it because you're you're rebuilding it on common on a common ground, and there's no um, there's no threat or insecurity about an authoritative figure based on the title. There's no intimidation based on title. Um, so I would I would definitely say you know deal with one another just as women and find that commonality first. I think that would make it a lot easier. Okay, that awesome, awesome. So I want to um, uh, I'm curious about everyone's relationship with their their da- the one who has um, those of you who have daughters. Like I, I have a daughter. You know my daughter's name's Abby. Everybody knows that, and. When I talk, when when I had that show with Doctor uh, Doctor Bessie Fletcher, um, me and um, Mr. Sal, and just listening to her talk, it touched something on the inside of me because I did not grow up with my mother. So for me, it's like I didn't even know that my mother was my mother until I was probably like nine because I was raised by my father. A whole bunch of stuff happened in the family where um, I ended up being with my father and his wife, and, and of course his wife was, was abusive or whatever. So when I in, when um, my father took me back to my mother's house on, I mean my grandmother's house on Christmas Day, and I don't even I didn't even remember them, but they embraced me with love, whatever. And then over time, I ended up finding out that my stepmother, who all that time I thought was my real mother, was not. So then I found out, mm-hmm. oh, I got a, I have a, a real mother. Like, this woman that's been abusing me for the last nine years, that was nine by the time my father took me to my grandmother's house. This woman who's been abusing me and mistreating me all this time is not even my mother. So then I started trying to build a relationship with, with my mother, but the dynamics wasn't in place the way they needed to be. And so it really didn't happen until, we turned, until I turned about 18. And so... I, um, we have it has taken me from 18 and now to build to where we are now, but I but when I was when Dr. Bessie was was talking to me, it was like she could feel something that I guess I wasn't even like what did what did you feel from me, Dr. Dr. Fletcher that made you say I can feel the dynamic? There was something about I don't know my look, my tone, or something that you could feel that there was something, a conversation that, that happened between me and my mother that would help me with me and my daughter. It was something. There was something that you felt. So I just wanted to give you the opportunity. Tell me, what did you feel? Like, what what was it that I was saying, or what did you feel about? I don't know. But it touched me. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, the uniqueness about what I do is that I'm anointed to do that. And mm-hmm. when I meet mothers and daughters, I can pretty much, I, I know you. You can't lie to me. So when I meet people, when, I, when you were talking, the Holy Spirit was talking to me. And the Holy Spirit tells me what to tell a person. So when you were talking about you and your daughter not getting along, I'm listening to you, and I'm talking, and the Holy Spirit is telling me, about you and your mother. It's one thing that mm. you can't skip. You can't skip a generation and think you're going to be okay. And mm. that's why I, I told you, I said, until you get, you said something that triggered something and the Holy Spirit spoke, until you get your relationship straight with your mother, it's going to be hard for you to have an honest relationship and a trusting relationship with your daughter because you can't give what you don't have. So when there's right. a mother and a daughter, I have a daughter come to me 50-some years old, and her mother's 80-some years old, and then she got a daughter that's 30-something. It's the same conversation because what? It has never been fixed. That's why when Cynthia came to volunteer at my organization, as she was walking out the door, the Holy Spirit said, ask her how's her mother and daughter relationship. That's my key. I, when I meet people, I say, how's her mother and daughter relationship? 
she said, what do you mean, how's my mother and daughter relationship? It's fine. I said, okay. Well, I knew right then it wasn't fine because the Holy Spirit wouldn't have told me to ask her. So I said, uh, okay, when, I said, when did the last time you talk to your mother? Oh, it's been months looking at me getting all short. I said, oh, okay, well, you can't work here until you get straight with your mother because we can't have hypocrites. Well, she walked out saying to herself, I'm trying to help you out, chick. But she <laughs> took the challenge. Her mother was only five, ten minutes away. You haven't talked to your mother? I know. But I came to learn to know her mother. But Back to you, that's the kind of thing that happens when I'm talking or I'm having sessions with someone. It's just I know within my spirit, and I can tell you, and you get it. But when what was the most amazing thing that happened, and someone else noticed it too, was that you went and your, your eyes closed, and I thought, is she sleeping? You know? We were on IGTV, y'all, so this, I was looking at her, and I said, what happened? And I'm talking, but I'm tr- in my mind, I'm saying, what happened? You just went someplace. Your eyes were closed. Wow. And even people said to me, said, well, did you see that? You took a transition. That's why you called wow. your mother the next day. Because, see, what I've done I did. now, I've tapped, I, I, I tapped into something for you. So now I would love to talk to you and your mother and your daughter. Because, see, I have opened up something that I need to now help you heal through. And I guarantee you, in 45 minutes, you and your mother and your daughter will walk away in such a spirit that you'll almost forget what happened in the past. I've been doing it for 20 years. It's amazing how it works, and I've been on the low with it because people don't understand it. How can somebody not speak in 40-some years, and then all of a sudden, in two hours, they have forgotten it? And that's what happened to you. You got caught up in that transition that the Holy Spirit was telling me, and he wants to heal your relationship. So I was excited to come back today because we just shouted and laughed and said, oh, my God, did you see? This was a gentleman. He said, did you see what mm. happened? He said, did you see that? I said, yeah, I, I, I'm used to it. <laughs> but for people who are not used I, I to didn't, it, I didn't, rec- I didn't, they I didn't recognize me. it. I did not recognize I didn't recognize it, however, I did a live the next day talking about it, and it really brought me to tears just because of, you know, my dynamics with my mother and 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 my daughter. But we have a. I, I want to get this call in to see if they have a question before we take a break. Um, I got a call okay. here on here from Atlanta, four hundred four. Who is that? It is Van Miller. I've been on the entire show. <laughs> I don't even know what happened. Okay, so let me ask you because that was what I was trying to get to you. So you are a mother. I want to say this to you before we go to break. You are a mother hen of 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 many women. So I know you heard my question to you then. How do you deal with all those women who a lot of them probably have broken relationships with their mother? Wow, I have been doing it for so, so long. I myself, um, my mom fell dead singing in church on a Sunday um, 35 years ago. Uh, So I was left with uh, siblings that I had to raise, and so I've just always been that caretaker kind of person. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I was ordained in 2001. And I knew that I would not be a pulpit minister, that I would be out in the hedges and highways. So my ministry and my purpose is doing exactly what it is that I do. Um, Dealing with models, it is not always about them being on the runway, you know, being beautiful and the beautiful clothing and the beautiful, you know, hair and makeup. But what is really going on in their life? And so I get that opportunity to be that person that they can call, um, you know, anytime. They'll tell you I can call her anytime. And, you know, and I get to talk talk to them because for me, uh, one of the things I, you know, kept my – I have two daughters as well, and my middle daughter kept asking me, you know, Mom, what is your story? What is your story? And I just kept saying, you know, what does she mean, what is my story? Because I didn't understand. I thought she wanted to know 
Um, I was married for 26 years, and I left to save myself, and that was what I thought she wanted to know. But she wanted to know my story, but I didn't know my story because I didn't know my mom's story. So when I hear the doctors speaking on that tonight, you know, that is really a true part of me. I didn't know who I was because I didn't know who my mom was. I didn't, you know, you cannot be a mother if you never had really had a mother. So I really, really never had that mom. Um, she had six children, and it was I was always the person left to take care of these kids. So I did not find out until about three years ago. I went to my aunt, and I asked her, what kind of person was my mother? And so my mother never had a mother. So how could she really truly mother us if she did not experience that and she had not, you know, been in that kind of environment? So as a parent, it affected me because I feel like I just got to the point, you know what, I'm just tired of taking care of people. But that is not who God has purposed me to be. So I just... I just love people. I love women. I don't care. Some of them are older than I am. But I love just being with them and hearing what is going on with them. So it definitely does make me, the mother, he and my kids say, Mom, you probably got 125 kids in Atlanta because I mother these children. Mm. Mm. You, you know what? That is so Deep, and I want to come back to um, after the break. I want to come back and talk to Dr. Bessie and everyone, um, you know, about basically our story, you and me, uh, Miss Van Miller, because I didn't grow up with my mother. You know what I'm saying? So how do you? And then so you have you start to look at your aunts and your grandmother and your other women that are around you as your mother because that that person that you know. You don't have that relationship, so I really want to come back and touch on that. But I'm going to take a quick break. So we're going to take a quick break so everybody can go get their little wine thing. We unscripted, y'all. Get your little wine. If you don't drink wine, get some orange juice. I don't know. But we'll be right back. Sometimes I wonder, have I been a failure? If I'm being honest, I feel so far away. Are the best days behind me? Am I worthy of your love? Lord, help me remember all your grace is one. Cause you came running, running out to me. You gave all you had to make me whole.
brothers and sisters. I want to welcome you back to life. Back to the one that can make your next chapter your best chapter. Hallelujah. How can it be? Remember 
So um, you have tuned in to another episode of On the Move Unscripted. Um, this has been a powerful uh, 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 show. Um, Mr. Mr. Stout or Kenny or uh, Skin Beats, because everybody knows him by different names. He does a lot in the industry. But he thought it would be powerful to bring the women together, bring powerful women together to talk about something that was so special, so so sensitive, which is, you know, mothers and daughters and, and, and that whole relationship. So I definitely want to um, – we're actually winding down on the show, and so I want to give each uh, individual person who came on about three or four minutes to, you know, give a word of advice to a mother or daughter relationship and also give your websites and all that kind of stuff. But, I, but before we do that, I want to um, speak back to Dr. Uh, Bessie. Uh, Fletcher, and I want to ask you to, because when we went on break, Dr. Van, uh, Van, uh, you're not supposed to be a doctor, because I think you want to put doctor before your name in, really. <laughs> but um, uh, speak to us about a mother, a, a daughter who didn't grow up with her mother for whatever reason and trying to connect and understand, or who has been forced to be the mother because the mother had to work. And so she's angry on the inside because she had to raise all the siblings because mom was absent at home, whether it be work or maybe it be some other situation. Like, what would you say to us? Like, what would be your words for us? 
So you're asking me from the daughter's yeah. perspective how she feels by what is, becoming the you, the parent? You, uh, uh, what, um, whichever one you want to speak to, either from whatever you feel led to speak to either the mother in the situation or the daughter, like however you want, or both. You, um, you say what you the spirit is telling you to say. Okay. Well, like someone said earlier, and I say it quite often, there's no perfect mother or perfect daughter. Once we get that, then we have to get allowed so much leniency for the relationship. But Ezekiel 16.44 says, as is the mother, comma, so is her daughter. And that's the foundation that God gave me for mothers and daughters. See, mm-hmm. a daughter is going to mimic what she sees from her mother. A lot of times we think that the daughter is really looking at someone else as an idol, a model, or a star, or whatever. No, they are looking at you. There is 86,400 seconds in a day, and you, if you're with your mother, you are watching her. If you're not with her mother, you're judging because you're watching someone else enjoy their mother and daughter relationship, and you you you're you're looking and wishing that that could be you. And so let's look at the little girl that doesn't have her mother. As I go into the schools, and this has happened many times, their young girls are fighting. They're angry. They're having sex early because they want to lash out at something that they don't really know what they're lashing out at. So I asked them, why are you fighting? I don't know. I don't like her. The reason I don't like her, she's always talking about her mother. We go here, we go there, and her and her mother. She thinks she's cute. A lot of it's just angry, anger just built up because they don't know why I don't have my mother, why my mother left me, why my mother went to prison, why I got to stay with somebody because nobody's going to treat you like a mother's supposed to treat you. I don't have an answer as to how they can fix it, but what I can help them to do is to come together and have that honest conversation. If I had to put you and your mother on the phone, the spirit's going to work anyway. And we're going to get to what happened because there's always something that happens. A mother that's with her daughter and the daughter's acting out. See, the mother can be in the home. The body is there, but the mind's not. She's there in the morning. Good morning. How you doing? The girl go to school, come back. Good afternoon. How you doing? No conversation, just fluff. Get your homework, get your dinner. Go to bed. That's why everybody's having a difficult time by being in the house today. Daughter, mother's calling me. I'm like, really? The daughter's in the house and you can't handle a 16-year-old? Are you the mother or are you the daughter? The daughter locked the door. I said, take the door off the hinge. Call the mother. Mm. Because, mm. see, she's not used to having. See, what is happening now, that daughter with her mother, she is not used to having that closeness with her mother. See, families have been distancing themselves for years. That's why people have difficulties coming into this room, because they've never really been together. I'm seeing you for the first time. Who are you? You've never been my mother. You walk in from work. You fix some food if necessary. If not, I fix it or whatever. We are not mother and daughter. We are not family. Now I got to look at you all day long. I can't go anywhere. That's why they're having difficulties. So mm-hmm. how do they fix that? You've got to sit down and you've got to have an honest conversation. And I'm talking to the mothers. A daughter is not going to be able to do it. I'm 21 and a half years older than my, my daughter. That means I have 21 and a half years worth of experience. So I don't expect for my daughter to come into my world. I'm going to have to go back into hers. So I tell mothers, you go into your daughter's world. Put down that phone. Go in there and sit down and say, look, I want to talk to you. Find out who she thinks that you are. Get your pen and a piece of paper and a three-minute timer. And says, you know what? I want you to write down ten things that you like about me. And write down ten things that you don't like about me. And then let's have a conversation. 
Now, when you do this, you got to be honest because, see, teenagers are tired of fluff. They're tired of you trying to pretend. They know you. If she's been in your space from a little girl, she know you. She know when you're lying. She know when you're pretending. She know when you talk about Miss Jones, and then you see Miss Jones at church, and you say, "Oh, Miss Jones, how you doing? You look so pretty today." She looking at you like somebody the other day. You don't even like Miss Jones. See, wow. as is the mother, so is the daughter. So she's watching you. You on the phone talking, thinking a three year old don't understand what you're saying. She hear you. So your book, so, um, Good News, God Speaks to Mothers and Daughters, I ordered that book. I cannot wait for it to come. I swear to goodness. I have not read a book in a while because with me being an author and writing and, you know, and, 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 and all that, I have not read any books. But I cannot wait to read your book, Good News, God Speaks to Mothers and Daughters. I absolutely cannot wait to read it. Um, so where can they get your book? Like, what is your website and stuff? The website is mdbn.org. That's M as in mother, D as in daughter, B as in bonding, N as in network, dot org. In this book, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for it to come. Like, I, I keep looking at my mailbox like, it ain't here yet. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'm serious because with me having a daughter, and I know, like, when we was on the show with, with um, when I was on the show with you with Mr. Stout, and it affected me so much that I did a live the next day, and because that God deals with me in the morning, so I do a lot of little videos in the morning, and I just start speaking, and I actually tears start rolling down my eyes. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on, you know, because I, you know, I wrote the book. This Can't Be Love, which dealt with the abuse that I experienced as a child from by my stepmother. And then I made the movie. And, and, and a lot of people, you know, were uh, – I did the movie This Can't Be Love as well. It's on YouTube. But a, a lot went into that because okay. I did not grow up with my mother. So I, I, I'm trying to build that relationship now, you know. I, um, and, and, I'm, um, and sometimes my heart – I get probably a little jealous maybe because – you know, the children that she did grow up with, she has a closer bond with them because, you know, she had them from the hospital. But for me, I haven't been there so long, and, you know, I wasn't there throughout my childhood years. So I feel like, hey, you know, she, not, she don't look at me like she look at them because she was with them all the time. So I had my own probably little struggles or whatever, and I really just, I honestly cannot wait to read your book. And I appreciate you so much for um, coming on the live coming on tonight and just, you know, talking to us. But I want to slide on down because I know I want to give everybody an opportunity to say about three minutes um, uh, um, about a mother-daughter issue. I'm going to say something about two minutes and then also give your handle. So we're going to go on down. The next one, um, and I'm sorry I don't have everybody's name wrong down, so I have to write that. I have to mention your your, your um, area code. So the next one is 919. Who Who is 919? That's Dr. A. Marie. Hey, um, Dr. A. Marie. I've been enjoying. So, yes. Go ahead. Dr. A. Marie, I, when I talk to you, you have a way of reaching into the soul of a person. Like, I literally listened to one of your shows that you were a guest on, and the girls were young girls, and you. I don't know what gift you got. I don't know what it was, but they went from it's supposed to be a little, you know, fun, little cheerleader thing that everybody started talking about their problem, their issues, their tears, <laughs> they cry. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> so, to a, to a, if you, if I were to come to you, and I want to say to you, um, Dr. A. Marie, I feel lost because I feel like my mother um, doesn't even really like me. What, what would you say? So I, I would talk to you first. I would get started on, you know, what that feels like, what that's been like for you. But what I get to with a lot of my patients is having a conversation about the role. Do you see? One of the questions I would ask you is, what role do you see um, that the mother, that do you think that a mother plays in the relationship? And what role as a daughter do you play? So we'd have a discussion on on that because a lot of times from what I've seen is that there's a values difference and that there's a misunderstanding of what the role is. So if you can get to some acceptance about 
the road and you get into the discussion about the values, then you open up um, the pathways of energy to flow between the two. Right? My daughter taught me a lot about my role as a mother. I have, I have a daughter. She's 29. And she taught me a lot. Five years old, quick story. She goes to bed. She loves school. So one night I say to her, I say, listen, get yourself ready for bed. You know, it's about 9 o'clock, time to go to bed. She stands in this little five-by-five five hallway. She's little. I'm big. And she looks up at me, and she says, you can't make me. She's five. She yeah. loves school. And she said, you can't make me. Now, everything in me, it took everything in me. I pray. I'm like, Lord, listen here now, that one of the two of us ain't going to make it. Somebody got to go. Because how's this child talking to me like that? I'm the mama. But something came over me and said, listen. Your role, foster her, to educate her, to support and encourage her, her growth, and where she is. And at five years old, she wanted to have some control over her life. That came over me. And you know what I said to her? I said, you know what? You're right. I can't make you. But what I can do is go in that room. I can take that TV out of there. I can take those pretty purple and pink comforters and all those toys that you have, and I can take them out and I can give them to somebody else. So here's what you do. You make the decision of whether you want to go to bed tonight or you want to go to school tomorrow. You make that decision, I'm going to bed. I shut the light off in the hallway. I went to my room, left her standing there in the dark. Mm. We never had that conversation again. She got up the next morning. She went to school. See, she valued her freedom and independence at five. We could have clashed so, at that time. So you have a, um, I don't mean to cut you off, but you have a mm-hmm. show that's going to be starting uh, that you were talking about where you're going to be counseling people on your show. Right? What's the name of your show again? The Eye of the Storm. So yes, we're going to be storm. having some candid discussions that people don't mm-hmm. typically want to have. On the radio. So where would they where will they be able to once it does launch where will they be able to find it like how will they be able to get to you or give your social media a handle so they can follow you like so that when that show comes on they can you know be a part of that. Absolutely. So I'm at Dr. A Marie Storm. That's D D R A M A R I E. Uh, actually, Dr. A Marie Marie on uh, Facebook. And then I am on uh, Dr. A. Marie Storm, Storm with two M's, on IG. And that's where the advertising for the show will take place. Awesome. Awesome. Thank and you I so much for coming out. And I also have a new website that I just launched for therapy. Let me throw awesome. that in there. It's called mattersofthemind365.com. So that's M-A-T-T-E-R-S of the mind, M-I-N-D, 365. Uh, dot com. We just launched that a couple of days ago. So, yeah. oh, awesome. Well, I appreciate you so much for coming on. Um, you're a blessing, and I know that the women that you minister are going to be blessed as well. So, I'm going to go on down the line. Um, the next area code is five one six. So, for this, I just want you to give a word of advice to a mother and daughter. Um, so, who is five one six? Area code. Uh, this is Dr. Kane. So, a so word, Dr. King. Dr. King, hi. So, again, a word of advice that I would give to a mother and daughter is to appreciate each other in the sense that you may think that the mother's going to die first, but that's not necessarily so because young people have all kinds of diseases. So if you're a mother, appreciate that daughter, appreciate the time you have with her. If you are a daughter, Appreciate your mother. Appreciate the time that you have with her because time is not promised to us, so we have to live each day and treat each other like this is our last day that we're going to see each other. So I think that the mother needs to strive for understanding her daughter because generations think differently, and the mother and the daughter has to try to see the mother's point of view because, again, generations think differently. But the bottom line is you have one mother and you need to appreciate her. And no matter how many daughters you have, you need to appreciate all of them. Wow. So you have a website now where um, patients who 
And it doesn't matter what city they live in or what state they live in. If their medication has run out and they cannot get to the doctor, you have a website where they're able to go on and actually get their medication. So what, what is that website? All right, so I have three websites. One is for my magazine. It's called impeccablemagazine.com. That's with an E. I also have a website called Impeccable Health where we discuss health issues, especially uh about the COVID, COVID pandemic that's going on. And then I have a third website that's called um, getyourrefill.com because so many people are out of their medications right now during this pandemic and they can't get to their doctor. So those are my websites. They can get a refill at get, getyourrefill.com. They can go to Impeccable Magazine or Impeccable Health. So I appreciate you so much, um, Dr. Kane, for coming on. And actually, I was in, I believe it was the March um, and April edition, and that really was, like, amazing to me. I was so happy. So I'm going to go on down the list. Um, and the next, uh, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. I said 919. Uh, 330, I believe, is the next. Three three zero. That's Lynn John, Ohio. <laughs> hey Patricia. So Lynn, <laughs> um, yes. If you could, because we're running down on time, real quick, like okay. quick though. Now you don't even get three minutes now, unfortunately. You probably get that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just. I'm gonna make my one word. and a half minutes. I'm gonna you make know, my uh, one and a half minutes. Oh, you gonna okay. ask me a question? I'm if, sorry. No. Well, well, actually, I, 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 if you could say anything to your mom right now, what would you say? Oh, Ooh, I was trying to keep it together. Okay. I would say to my mom, thank you so much for all the love that you gave me. That's what I would say to her. I really do appreciate that. I would, I would never forget her, and she knows I, I talk to her all the time. I told her when she was in hospice, Tama, that's what I said to her when she, she passed on away from here. It's it's so much pain that she was going through, and then just this world can sometimes just be a, a, a painful period. But mm-hmm. on the brighter side, I wanted to ask Van Miller a question. I think she's here in Atlanta because I moved back to Atlanta. Probably, so I wanted you know to what? ask You're her. You're going to have to. You're you're probably gonna have because I don't need to make sure I go all the way down the line. Okay. So go ahead and ask okay. her and when I get to her she's gonna answer. <laughs> go ahead and ask her. Okay, cool. All right, real quick. Miss Van Miller, please if you could tell us where young girls or women or of any age, where can they go in Atlanta to get help? Because it's so hard to find programs down here for anything, really to be honest. So do you know of any programs for help, for job training, uh, uh, housing, shelters, anything? Because whatever you have, if you could post it, give it to me. I'm at lynnjohnentertainment.com on my website or on Facebook, Lynn John Entertainment. I really want to help those down here because Atlanta is, is well, it's Atlanta. <laughs> I'll just right. leave it like that. So, and, but thank you, Patricia. And if they want to. If they want to get in touch with you for a flyer, what do they need to do? Lynn John Entertainment dot com. L Y N J O H N Entertainment dot com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lynn. I appreciate you so much for for chiming in and for just speaking to everybody. Uh, I'm gonna go down the list. Uh the next area code is nine five four. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. This is Cynthia yes, Oliver. Ma'am. I wanted oh, to share, Cynthia if you don't Oliver. mind, I have those statistics that you guys okay. were looking for. 66% okay. of women in prison are mothers of children under the age of 18. There are some mm. 17,000 children separated each year from their mothers, and only 5% mm. of those children remain in their home after their mother is incarcerated. Wow. Wow. I, I knew, I, for some reason, and I know this show wasn't about that, but for some reason that just jumped out at me, like the whole 
thing about the mothers that are incarcerated and the children. It just jumped out at me. Like I couldn't, you know, when uh, Dr. Uh, Betsy Fletcher talked about, you know, being led by the Holy Spirit and, and saying what you feel, that's what I felt like. There's going to be, if not tonight, then maybe later, you know, they're going to listen to this. There's going to be women, uh, or, or if that's not the case, then the the women that are on this panel are going to be dealing with women and children and, and, and the jail system. There's something about that that I really hope that everybody um, um, uh, reaches out to everybody. I'm going to go back to Dr. Bessie so she can give her email. So everyone, please email her your your email information so she can keep you for that 200 women that she's looking for because I promise you, you are not here by accident. And thank you for giving me – um, in fact, you're her assistant, right? Aren't you her assistant? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can you I'm give the dean her, of education. Can you give Dr. Bessie's uh, um, email address so all the ladies can reach, can send their her their contact information to her so she can have yes, them ma'am. as part of the, the 200 women? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Give me one second. Her email address is... One second, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Uh... Her email address is MDB C C M as in Mary, D as in dog, B as in Bob, C as in cat, C as in cat, dot Fletcher, F L E T C H E R 412 gmail.com. Again, that's M as in Mary, D as in David, B as in Bob. C is in cat, C is in cat, dot Fletcher, 412 at gmail.com. So thank you so much for giving us that information. So definitely I would ask, even myself, I'm going to send her my information because I feel like, like I said, this meeting, this grouping, this bringing together, Kenny was inspired to bring all these women together who are specialists in their areas and is not for nothing. Please believe me when I say nothing happens by accident. You're not on this line by accident. The people who listen to this is not it's not by accident. It is it is timing, like Dr. Fletcher said. It's time. It's timing. This is this is timing of things. So I'm going on down the list. Um I, I know my my, my uh Mr. Stout is there. Mr. Stout, I know you're still there, but we're gonna have to pass by you, thank you. I'll come back to you. <laughs> we're going down to um area code two one six. That's me. That's Kim. Two one six. Yes, mm-hmm. ma'am. So Kim, and um, uh, do you? Because I know you've been in Atlanta for a little, a long time, and Lynn wanted to know about any type of outreach programs. Do you know of any? I do not, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sad to say it. I don't know any right off, um, but that don't stop us from creating any. You are right. um, amongst women who have the ability to do it, whether we're in the same city or not. It's the information and the energy that needs to pass, and it can it can pass and spread wherever it needs to go. Well, I will say this. Um, there is a domestic violence shelter called Safe Haven Transitional. They have been in the – it's tra- at safehaventransitional.org. SafeHavenTransitional.org, and they have been dealing with women and children in domestic violence shelters. They are a transitional shelter, so they've been dealing with this for a long time, and they've been dealing with having to give resources to women. So what I would say to you, Lynn, is to reach out to SafeHavenTransitional.org and ask them for referrals because they would know because they deal with women who need those services. So that's something that I, I would definitely suggest. And then uh, Ms. Van Miller may have some more. Um, so, Kim, you have a new website that came out, right? I do. It is myomywellness.com, M-Y-O-M-Y wellness.com. And on that, I also offer uh, virtual counseling to those that um, don't want to do the face-to-face counseling. We can talk about anything. And I'm also offering a $19 special right now for it as well for those who are not able to, um, you know, pay full price and taking donations online also to help other people who need counseling and are not able to uh, afford it. So definitely take advantage of that. It's myomywellness.com, M-Y-O-M-Y wellness.com. 
awesome. I appreciate you so much for coming on tonight, Kim. And I do know that um, Kim deals with a lot of men and their situations because men, we, we look at the women and we look at the children and, and not take it take away anything from mothers and daughters because we need that, but those men need it too, you know, and Kim deals with a lot of the men who are hurting and trying to get counseling things set up for them and things they need because if we can reach out to them, then maybe some of the abusive situations that's going on between in the relationship can be solved or at least helped in some kind of way. But I'm going to go on down the list, and um, the next one is 404 area code. That is me. I believe that's uh, Van Miller. Van so, Miller. Van Miller um, yes. Lynn asked you about uh, shelters. Do you know of, or, or any type of services for women and children? Do you know of any? Lynn, the um, <laughs> the Atlanta market is very, very, a very, very hard area for that. But um, um, I I do know some people that I can reach out to get some information for you because most of I travel outside of this city. Um, to state to state most of the time. Mm-hmm. But I can get some people. Yeah, so I can get somebody. How me. can they reach out to you? How can they reach out? How can she reach out? you have an email or a website? Yes, my, you my email and is my, my My email is house, H-O-U-S-O-F, V as in Victor, A as in Apple, N as in Nancy, Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R, at gmail.com. Say that one more time for me, please. It's house, H-O-U-S-E, O-F, V as in Victor, A as in Apple, N as in Nancy, Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R, at gmail.com. So... You have a show that's um it was on Fox TV for How Did I Become a Model and now and then it was it's um it's on um um Amazon Prime. Uh, yeah, Amazon. Yeah. 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 So tell yes. me about that real quick. I don't know if you got a chance to talk about it. Why did I become a model? Is a um it's it's a show about models. Uh, initially, when I sat down, they thought that that was that is what we will be talking about. But when I got there, I realized that it was my ministry. And so this ministry has allowed me to move from the Fox network um, into a Netflix clicks and now on prime Amazon. Uh, We actually uh, have a, I think a two hour special that's getting ready to come on uh, this weekend. Uh, And this is where during the pandemic, uh, we've asked models, uh, what is it like being a model in quarantine? And so they all sent us in these different videos about their experience with it. And so we've created the show, and it's going to air on um, Amazon Prime. So are you still accepting for the next series, or are you still accepting a video? We are still accepting videos um, because I think more than likely we're not going to be able to go out and travel and do the show. So we're still accepting videos and we're also accepting um, submissions for our magazine. We also have Why Did I Become a a Model magazine as well. And you don't have to be a physical model. A model can be one of the doctors that we have on here tonight. We just need you to send in a, a, a three to five minute video talking about what your experience is like, what it is that you're doing and, uh, we send all that into uh, the producers and everything, and they just do what they do with it. And what what what's the email address that they need to send? The you said it's three to five minutes. Is that what you said? How long is it? It's How a three to, five, to three to five minute video. You don't have to be all dressed up because we're in quarantine. We're talking about your life in quarantine. So um, I think it's on my page, uh, visions. Something I, I can't remember right off hand. The visions I can tell you in a minute. If you all ask me, because I, I just that. put it up on my slide. So while you're looking for it, I'm just gonna say I realized yeah. at first when I first did that 
um, when I first brought my daughter, Ebony, to the thing in South Carolina, I thought it was, I, my mind was strictly models. I was like, okay, my daughter's pretty enough. She's still, she's the right size. She got the right shape. That's what, that's where my mind was. But once I watched the first, the first two series, um, that you had on Amazon Prime, I said, oh, no, oh, no, this is more than that. This is more than just a, a pretty face and what she's doing behind, you know, in the house because she can't get out. No, it's more, it's deeper than that. It's about, it's a ministry. It's about why did you become a model? Why are you a model? Why are you a role model? Who are you? What do you have to offer to humanity? What do you have to to offer to the young women? What do you have to offer to the mothers? What can you say? What goals? What inspiration? What do you have to give? That's what I got from it. And once I got that, I sent her the video because I said that um, I didn't meet her by accident. And so none of you on here right now have, are on this line by accident. So I hope that each of, each one of you sends in a video because it's necessary. This is a time when people need you. got people that your video might be the thing that keeps somebody from losing their freaking mind or understanding themselves or being inspired or whatever. So I would definitely encourage everybody on this line right now, and anyone who's listening, please submit a video. So did you find the, ad, the um, email address? Yes, or what it's, 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 it's video impressions, tv at gmail.com. Awesome. Say it one more time for me. Video impressions with an S at gmail.com. I'll repost awesome. it on my awesome. page. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, um, uh, Van Miller, for coming on and for speaking. So I want to go back up to um, Dr. Betsy Fletcher and let her, um, in this uh, conference, in the way that she feels um, led by the Holy Spirit to to end it. I, I knew with all the 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 confusion and stuff that was going on with the, with the sound and any other, I said that was just the enemy trying to stop something because there was there's power in this. Spiritual power, emotional power, things that people need. You, all the women that was on here, all the callers, all even the people who listen in, you're not listening by accident. Please understand that. So I just want to let Dr. Fletcher um, uh, speak whatever the Holy Spirit is saying to her to speak to the mothers, you know, in observance of Mother Day or whatever comes to her heart. Just, just I'm opening up the line back up to you, Dr. Fletcher. Thank you very much. First of all, I'm just going to get this out of the way. Um, I, will, I am honored. I listened to all the ladies, and um, you all touched my heart. I know this was not an accident, and I was just saying, God, is this the beginning of something stronger? You know, we've been doing this uh, piece of looking to put together the 200 women and to do the uh, numbers that God asked me to do, which is very easy. 10 million mothers and daughters around the world coming together, and can you imagine what that would do? I have joy right now because I was so blessed by each person. Everybody here has, if we came together, just a few of us, with the power and the spirit that I felt from each one of you guys, we can change the world. We can change the world. We can start a movement that's so powerful that mothers and daughters will want to come. They'll feel the need to come. All God needs is just a few good people dedicated and know what mother and daughter. So, see, there's no human being can come into the earthly realm without a woman. And if you're so lucky that God chose you to have a daughter, then you have a responsibility to raise that daughter in a way that she's going to be able to serve humanity and to be good and deposit something good into the earth before she leaves. What is our purpose? Our purpose is to help God. In my book, God says, tell them that I love them. When you go to church, you hear about John, Mark, Luke, and all the other men. But nobody's talking about God, what he says about women. It's in there. I didn't even know it was in there. I didn't even know that he said in Ezekiel sixteen forty four, as is the mother, so is the daughter. He said, now you tell him I said that. And you tell them, don't change nothing, don't add nothing to it, don't take nothing away from it. But in that book, God Amen. tell them, I'm in need, I am in need of them. Most people say, God don't need nobody. Yes, he does. He can do no work in this earth without us. 
He created us to procreate. We have that power. We have that nourishing power that God needs in order to heal the family. So he's sending our children home. He's saying churches shut down, schools shut down. I'm tired. Everybody go home. I want the mothers to take over. That's why he's pushing this movement with me right now. That's why we on this phone right now. I don't like want this call to hang up while we're, while we're on because I'm afraid it's going to hang up on me because they only give me an exact okay, amount of time. Okay, let me say this. So I want, you, I want you all to go and to go to my YouTube and look at God in Motion. It's a, a, the, the show that we put up, My Mother, My Daughter, is at Dr. Bessie Fletcher, Ph.D. Go there and see some of the things. You'll see the, the videos and you'll see God in motion, and then you'll know for yourself. But I say, you, say, say the site again. Say the site again. What's the site it's again? You, Bessie, B-E-S-S-I-E, Fletcher, Ph.D. That's the one that shows, it's showing the television show that God has asked us to start doing. And the first show is up. We premiered last Wednesday. But I I just want to say thank you, ladies. It's been an honor. You oh, all thank have you so much for coming on. Yes. So thank I'm going to open up the lines me. real quick. Is it, hopefully they don't hang up so everybody can just say goodbye. But I, I, this was so powerful to me. It was so much what I needed. There's going to be women that's going to come on here that's going to need this. Daughters, you just never know. You just never know why God does stuff. You just have to trust him. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to thank okay. everybody. Um, everybody get unmuted, so you just say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye, ladies. Bye, Bye everybody. Love, love you guys. Love you, too. Love you, too. Love you, Love you, too. Love you, you, too. Love you, too. Thank you, But I want you yes, to know I'm offering, you. I'm offering you, uh, I'm offering you and your mother and your daughter sessions with me, and that's on me. You, so you you talking about me, that's it, that's it, yes, you talking ma'am. about me, Patricia? Yes, Liz? yes, oh, yes ma'am. Yeah. All righty. And I have a sister that needs to be in it, too, because my sister was adopted, and okay. we didn't find her until okay. she was uh, 30-something. Yes, so I'm going to – she was supposed to be on here tonight, but I guess, you know, she wasn't able to. But I – that 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 dynamic you're talking about between me, my sister, my mom, my daughter, it need, it needs to be. So I'm definitely going to reach out to them. Definitely, I appreciate everybody okay. so much for coming on. I appreciate y'all so much. I thank y'all. Continue to do what y'all do. Continue to change the world one person at a time. Make sure you send in your your um your videos. myself. I make sure you turn uh turn in your videos to Van Miller. But peace and love to all of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And until next time, uh tune in tomorrow uh, Thursday for uh Under Move Unscripted again with me and the ladies. But love y'all. <laughs> I hope you don't cut us off. <laughs> love y'all. to see people with their heads up to the sky still cause honestly for the same people life can be so real I'm amazed by all your strength I am and I'm grateful you Take this time to stop a moment And show my gratitude For you I put my lighter in the air for you I see what you're doing and I see what you go through Put my lighter in the air The truth is you're beautiful Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Now put your lighter in the air for us Everybody singing together, sing a new song Put your lighter in the air for love I can tell that